que são... Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> hey, hi, guys. Now, thank you so much. Uh, all right, great. Now we have the audio. Can you drop a two so you can hear me and Amir? Hmm. There's a bit of delay. Please drop a two. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, all right, so... Everybody, I am extremely um, excited about this upcoming mixing masterclass. We have the pleasure to have Amir Yakub, and I hope I pronounced this correctly. Um, yes. Uh, joining us from London. Amir, good evening. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm good. How are you? I hope everyone's doing well. It's, uh, it's great to have you. Um, we've been uh, introduced by our friend Katrina uh, from uh, Sona Works. Yes, She's indeed. actually bringing this, this session. Great, great company. Um, we do a plug for them because they are our sponsors, but also it's so appropriate um, as we're discussing, you know, today it's about mixing and mastering and especially helping mm. a lot of people working from their home studio. And of course. Their tool is, is pretty... Uh, it's pretty uh, helpful uh, to try at least to get a, a, a good uh, um, sound at home. So I'm going to do yeah. a quick intro for everybody uh, who uh, um, is not familiar with you. Um, mm -hmm. So guys, Amir uh, has a, an impressive uh, CV. Um, he's a Grammy award-winning engineer, producer, and songwriter. He has worked with a lot of people we admire and enjoy music on a daily basis. Ali Shakis, David Guetta, Maigos, Ryana, J. Cole, and Sia. Um, I love when someone describes their sound in their bio, so I'll try to, um, to, do, uh, to, do, uh, to pay uh, um, the right homage, but you like to create beats infused with contemporary style of pop, soul, mm -hmm. and hip-hop. Um, I think what the track you're going to use today is more leaning towards what, what style? It's um it's actually like you could call it like country R and B pop um and it's something that I I had the pleasure of just mixing so I didn't produce this but I mixed it. So you mixed that track. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we are super excited to have you. Um, if you want to know what Grammy he won, he recently won a Grammy uh, for his work on Rihanna an apologetic album. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Amir, amazing to have you. Uh, this is where you take it from here. Um, if you guys, you can hear, I mean, you can probably hear me, but I want you, and I know you're asking a lot of questions right now on the Slack channel <laughs> for Matt uh, to understand what is, uh, is um, Matt just uh, is a max mixing engineer we just presented from Nashville and he really took a re home recording and make it sound really uh, awesome. quite impressive. Awesome. Um, uh, but because we have this amazing partnership with Sonarworks, we're going to give away, at the end of this session, uh, um, a version of Sonarworks um, Monitor Studio, which is, I think, a value of $300 to help you treat your room or at least uh, adjust your room. So you guys stick around, pay attention to what Amir is going to talk about because at the end he's going to ask a question and the first one about this session and the first one will answer correctly. Uh, will win the prize and will will connect you with Anna. We'll make sure that everything goes in order. Without further ado, enough of the intro. Uh, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put you only on the screen and you let me know when you want to share your screen. Uh, but here you are, solo. Cool. So um, firstly, I will start by saying thank you to the guys at Music Expo. Thank you to Sona Works. Um, for everything um and for inviting me today uh it's uh 6 30 in london uh in the evening and we'll be i'll be with you for the next hour and a half taking you through this mix um that i had the pleasure of mixing um the artist is called lexi that's l-e-x-i-e -E, um and i think her instagram is lexi official um and uh she's someone who i've been working with on a fairly constant basis <clears throat> her um uh, producers are um my friends and um obviously they know that i specialize in um mixing as well as producing um and one of the things 
I guess that I would say to a lot of people is, you know, if you if you can team up with someone else who understand your sound, even if you're a producer, um, uh, and get them to mix your your artists or your own records, um, and you can do the same for them, that's probably quite a good idea. Um, so kind of like building a community and stuff like that is kind of how this came to me. Um, the reason I'm actually pulling this one up um, today is because of the fact that I actually mixed this in uh, in lockdown. So um, I was working primarily from home um, during lockdown for obvious reasons. Um, I wasn't in my uh, studio environment, which is where I am today. Um, and um, I think it's important to um, to note um, a few things, um, particularly the fact that you know I would have been doing this in in my room, which is uh, at home. It's untreated. It's not tuned. It's you know it's not perfect. Um, and um, using headphones as well um, from time to time as a reference point is a great thing to do. Um, and so um, Sonarworks was a, a really big help for me in in all of that um, period. It kind of allowed me to carry on and to be able to trust the sound even at home with an untreated setup. Um, so this song... Um, yeah, kind of came to me, and 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 Lexi wanted to uh, wanted to have it mixed during the lockdown period so that it could be um, uh, released after lockdown. Um, and you know, she shot a music video in lockdown and all of this kind of stuff as well. Um, and over time, her and I have built up a great relationship, and um, and you know, there's a lot of trust between us when it comes to working together. Um, and um, one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build relationships as well. You're going to want to build really good relationships um, with other artists and other producers. And, you know, depending on what you specialize in, um, I think is very important um, for us all to support each other in, in this time. Um, and, um, you know, I I didn't charge Alexi what I would usually charge her um, on on this on on this song either. So you know we were all helping each other out, and I think if you can all take something from that side of things, particularly, um, I think that's probably a um, a good way to look at stuff going forward. So um, the song today is called um, "Be Your Fire," and um, the way that um, an artist like Lexi kind of works is she she comes um, with a lot of ideas from a lot of different genres and she tries to kind of put it all together and make it um, sound you know uh, accessible to today um, and everything rather than being much more of a throwback sound or something like that and um, I, I, I obviously that's something that I have to keep in mind when I'm working alongside her and I'm and I'm mixing um so um she she has a very um great approach to the production um which she co-produced um i believe with a producer called quants um and um she obviously has a big focus on vocals and um another reason why um our relationship is so great is because I, I care a lot about vocals um, too. And I think, you know, they're, they're the golden, the golden part of production um, and, um, and songs today. Um, when I start out a mix, whenever I personally start out a mix, um, aside from the obvious things like tidying up and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, how am I going to um, really um, serve this record? So I have to remember that I might want to do all of the, you know, tricks that I learned coming up and, you know, like tricks that I've learned from YouTube videos and blah, 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 blah. However, um, I, I really need to be able to serve this song to, to be able to be the best song that it can be based on obviously what I have received from um, the artist and the producer in this case. Um, so that's where I usually kind of start out. And um, as I'm preparing um, my mix um, in, in the way that I like, in the way that I like to see it and the way that I like to attack it, um, I'm always thinking about, you know, what I'm going to be doing. 
um, how am I going to make it um, sound great? That's my number one um, concern. Um, I I usually take um, a lot of cues um, from the production reference um, and that's always there in my um, session as well. And, and obviously when when uh, I show you guys the screen, you'll be able to see that. That's no, no worries whatsoever. Um, because um, one thing to remember is like a, a producer um, will have their own sound and they're, they're, they'll have their own style. And uh, I want to be able to respect that. I don't want to be able, I don't want to come in here with any sort of big ego or be like, you know, I'm going to completely re-transform your mix and all of this kind of stuff. My job is really to make it the best that it can be. I need to execute the vision of the um, artist and I need to execute the vision of the producer. That's my number one goal, okay? So, Loic, if you could uh, pop over to my screen for a second. Thank you. Um, I can start showing you a couple of things. Okay. So, um, I think organization goes a long way in a mix. Um, you are going to spend a lot of time looking at the screen. Hopefully not forever, but, you know, a long time. So, <clears throat> I, tend to, um, I tend to leave my drums at the top. Um, and um, up here, you can see all my drums are in red. And I tend to put my bass underneath that. So that's all my bass, you know, groups and, you know, the individual tracks and the groups. And I'm obviously going to get a bit more into that. I then um, kind of do an almost like a, a group um, by group kind of thing with, with an order of importance. So um, you can see this, this lane here um, is the guitar arp. Um, arpeggio uh, which was a very important feature and that kind of like was spread across a few different tracks um, and I've put them up there that's really to me is one of the lead instruments it's kind of driving a little bit of the rhythm as well so I want to keep that kind of close to the top and and looking at that group there and then it kind of starts to go down in an order of unimportance um, so as you can see before you hit all of my vocals which are in yellow essentially um, I have this track of FX which is just a bunch of effects that were um, you know in in just supposed to be in the background taking up space um, and uh, they would round out that would be all of my instruments up there and then everything below that really here is um, lead vocals and backing vocals um, and I'll show you obviously what my approach is to that I mean organization is a, a, a key thing um, I like to see colors you know the good thing I suppose the thing that I love the most um, about organization is I know that um, I can open up any mix or any production session that I've done in the last five years, six years, ever since I started to get properly organized. And um, I can see quite clearly, um, my, you know, if something's in red, it's going to be my drums. If something's in brown, it's going to be my bass and it's going to be underneath my drums. Um, and things start to make sense kind of like in, in a logical way. My, my, my lead vocals will always be in the brightest yellow that I can find um, and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I obviously like to have markers at the top. By the way, today I'm using Studio One. Um, I am a big fan of this DAW. Um, I use um, both Logic and Pro Tools, um, both for different things. So Logic, I'll do production in. Uh, I can obviously mix in Logic. I can mix in any of the DAWs, really. Um, um, Pro Tools, I love for tracking and for mixing as well. Um, and Studio One is is an, is kind of like an all rounder for me. I've I've, I've really got got into many of uh, many of the things that PreSonus are doing. I have a PreSonus fader port next to me as well, just a single channel one. I don't I don't need the you know all of the channels on on the bigger ones. Um, and um, yeah, they're 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 a great company and they're doing great things as well. So um, I'm 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 quite a fan of of the way that they've got stuff happening there. Um, so um, organization um, and then uh, one thing that I tend to do as well, um, just checking that my screen has flipped over, um, is obviously gain staging. Um, so at the top here, you'll be able to see that I've gain staged a lot of things. The things that haven't been gain staged are usually buses or, or effects or anything 
And as kind of like as I move down my mix, you'll be able to see lots of different colors, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And it might not make much sense to you, but it's fine. Um, and then I have at the end here, I have my um, my um, kind of like my busing workflow um, which is um, uh, where, you know, like I can take a kind of like a, a, a top down approach to the mix, but also I can I can just quickly adjust stuff that I need to adjust. So um, you can see all of that. Um, here's the reference track, which is muted at the moment, obviously, because I don't need it. Um, and, you know, I've got some stuff on post. Um, so, you know, there, there's my Sony works, of course. Um, um, and because I'm using my headphones today, I've just switched it over to that um and i'm using um i'm using a bunch of processing obviously as we're as we're going through stuff so i um i tend to work in a in a fashion which is um um i tend to start with the drums um drums and bass are very important um and in terms of the in in terms of um the overall um perspective of your mix you can get a lot of perspective just by looking at how your drums are working because they tend to cover the entire frequency spectrum all the way down from the kick all the way up to you know your hi-hats and your cymbals and all of that that's your higher end um your kind of snare drum sits somewhere in the middle of all of that and then you know you, you might have other bits and pieces just dotted around the frequency spectrum i tend to start there because um, I think obviously drums are really important and bass. It's, the, it's the, essentially the rhythm section of our mix. Um, and um, I will always start to go in and um, and 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 start to work from there. Um, and I, I, I tend to work from the ground up as well. So what I mean by that is I will tend to work with the kick and then the snare and then the claps and the hats and the toms and the percussion and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and once I'm happy with the way that that is and the way that that's sitting, um, I'll then be able to move on um, to other instruments. Now, one thing I think is very important for everyone to remember is that, yes, we have lots of plugins and I can use lots of plugins. Of course I can. Um, and, you know, I have lots of different plugins on 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 lots of different parts of this mix um but the key concept of a mix is a balance so um in my first pass of my mix i always listen to what the balance is and i adjust the balance only um so um the first maybe 20 to 30 minutes of my mix I'm 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 concentrating on getting a great static mix together. Essentially not worried about processing so much. <clears throat> I'm just worried about how everything sits together. Um I'll start to do a little bit of cleaning. So by cleaning I mean, you know, like cutting parts out that don't need to be there and stuff like that, but I don't always do that. As you can see on the drums, they just kind of go all the way through, even though they're not actually um, they're not actually all the way through. Um, let me just uh, do one thing here. I'll just yeah, just do that. Cool. Um, I'm using a really big screen in front of me, so you know it's uh, it's a little bit hard to see small waveforms. Um, and yeah, my balance is my is my is my key concern um, in in the beginning um, 20, 30, 40 minutes of my mix that's all i really care about um and then i go back and i start to work with for instance like i said to you i start I like to start with the drums um so uh, the drums here are pretty decent setup um i'm gonna i'm just gonna set up a quick loop around here um and <clears throat> where um I have um, two kick drums. I always have to kind of make a consideration as to, you know, do they both need to be there? In this case, they do because they're doing two separate things, and I'm and I'm happy for them both to be there. But remember, um, sometimes overcomplicating something um, by having five or six kick drums is not really adding anything. It might be actually taking away. So you want to sit down and and make some of those decisions. 
um and you know sometimes i've 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 worked on stuff i've mixed stuff for other people and uh, they haven't even noticed really what's been going on um that i removed you know three of their five kick drums um so um i would say this is something that you'll build with time and confidence of course um but don't be afraid to work with that kind of thing so um, I'm just going to check that you can see something because sometimes it doesn't come up on screen shares very well. Um, OK, so I can see that you can't see that. OK, fine. Um, so I use um, uh, quite often uh, this thing here. This is hopefully you can see that. OK, you can't see any of my plugins. Um, Right. Just give me one second. I'm going to just try a different approach to screen sharing. Sorry about this, guys. Um, I'm going to share my entire screen instead of just sharing one window. Um, share screen. Uh, okay, that's the one. Okay. So that's it. Right. So hopefully this will work. Um, oh yeah, just to mention the um, the audio interface I use on my studio is the Antelope Orion Synergy Core, which is a, a really nice one. Um, so now, yay! I think you can see that. Yes, you can. Um, okay, so I use um, I use uh, SoftTube uh, Console One. I use. Have you been using this system for quite a while now? Uh, one thing I love about this system is that in front of me, I have a controller for those of you guys who've not seen this, and it allows me to move around my mix very quickly. Another reason that I use Studio One is actually because it's very tightly integrated with SoftTube Console One as well. Um, so this allows me to move around my mix very quickly. And as as, as you can kind of see here, um, what I've got is I've got the SSL um, XL 9000K or the SSL 9K as it's known um, set up um, and this is their console emulation of that. Now the reason that I love this uh, so much is because you know obviously uh, big studios um, and I worked in a very big studio in London um, uh, having a board having a console and the sound of that console is quite um, quite inspiring, um, but also having the functionality of being able to, you know, just just touch some knobs as I move around and quickly do things. Um, this is this is what it's kind of all about for me. So. Um, this is something that you see on practically every channel um, and you can see like as I kind of flip through and I can flip through just on the actual device itself, uh, what this is allowing me to do is it's allowing me to quickly just go in and go right i want to put a low cut filter on that and it might seem counterintuitive that i've put a low cut filter on the kick but don't worry too much about that it'll make sense i promise um and um you can kind of start to see okay right this kind of makes sense for me now because if i quickly want to eq something if i quickly want to do um, some compression and stuff like that kind of like in the moment as I'm feeling it after I've done my balancing and everything I'm going to do very simple moves on 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 my groups um, of instruments particularly here we're talking about the drums um, to kind of like start building them up because I still don't consider this as me really mixing anything I'm still kind of like working and starting to shape and carve stuff out and this is why um, a, a, a system like this is great, but also, um, you know, just working in this kind of way is is just an, an excellent way for me to do things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and uh, try and do this. And OK, that's fine for now. And I'm going to go over to just get rid of some stuff because I want to see how well I want you guys to see how I would potentially build stuff up so I'm going to actually um, just uh, just remove some processing that I'm, that I'm um, that I've put on stuff as well so let's just get rid of these uh, there's nothing after that okay so cool um, so with my group of drums here I'm gonna uh, just just play you oh sorry give me one second 
I just remembered I had this voiceover channel, um, which I'm going to delete because I don't need it. Uh, remove track. There you go. Okay. So I'm um, just going back to my drums. Um, I'm just going to be able to just uh, obviously solo my drums. And I'll, I'll show you how this routing is working in a second. Um, but soloing my drums. Okay, so I'm cheating a little bit because with console one, I start to raise up the volume a little bit, which is fine, you know, it's fine. You know, we're gonna need to raise the volume at some point. I'll leave myself plenty of headroom when I'm gain staging to do that. Um, but the uh, the difference it starts to make is, is quite huge. So um, if I take um, just my kick drum here, so I've got two kick drums here um, and these two kick drums are, oh, didn't mean to do that, um, are working together with each other. Now, they prior to console one, they might not have been working so well. So here's where we had them. And I'll put console one on. So I've got much more definition out of the two, particularly the kind of like the more kind of like thuddy, knocky kind of one, the more one which is a little bit more hip hoppy. Um, so I've cut out the lower, the, 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 the basically the subs of one of those. Amir? Uh, yes. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Is it possible That's to okay. send a bit more signal into uh, Yeah, of course. Us? Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, this is what happens with gain staging sometimes. <laughs> um, so let me go back. Okay, so, um, so I've boosted it up quite a lot. <laughs> um, watch your speakers, guys. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it off again. So hopefully you're hearing and feeling that definition a little bit more now between the two kick drums. So like I said, on this first one here, which I'll solo for you, you can hear that's just kind of like an atmospheric kind of thing that's happening. Um, whereas this one here is more the one that's giving me that kind of like little knock and stuff. So here, what I've done, is um, I've, I've cut out some of the super, super lows, kind of like under 45-ish. Um, and um, I've added a bit of um, punch with my transient shaper because I want it to kind of like push through a little bit more. Um, and, you know, I've added a cheeky little bump with my EQ. This is just would be the, um, the regular kind of SSL 9000K equalizer. Um, so without the EQ and the transient shaper, So there's a there's a minimal difference, but there's a difference that I'm building up, and it's more about how it works with this guy. And starting to do that kind of stuff is obviously going to be very helpful. Now then, I mean, obviously, like you know, where would we be without this plugin? Um, Decapitator kind of starts to get involved, and um, I'm a big fan of using saturation to create new harmonics. And uh, obviously, uh, Decapitator is a is a great saturator in that sense. So um, my original, um, well, I guess my um, kind of more atmospheric kick um, It feels like it has more atmosphere and I haven't even touched um, an EQ or anything like that. It feels like it kind of like just opens up, feels a little bit brighter, but not in a way of me using EQ. Um, and with this kick drum here, the more thuddy kind of one, um, the more typical kind of one, I, I, I actually um, did something um, very similar. And, you know, I love this preset drum fattener, just adjust it to taste.
So this is kind of giving me a little bit more up top as well. And, you know, this is th th these are the kind of small moves that I'm looking to make, which should hopefully make all of the difference. So without any of those. And you're starting to get a bit more sense of that groove kind of coming through because you know you got the kind of like the one that's the 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 the, the second one kind of popping through a bit more. Um, really helpful to do this kind of stuff, particularly for um, smaller speakers. Um, so here I have something called a kick snare layer, um, and this is I'm just going to solo this one. So this is just something which is, you know, kind of doing a bit of a kick and a snare, kind of almost two-steppy kind of vibe. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, I haven't really done anything practically to this. All I've done is add some drive, if you can see from um, from the uh, from the console. This is essentially the same as me kind of like just pushing the signal into the circuit to get some kind of like, you know, juice back from it. Um, and uh, And then again, uh, my wonderful friend Decapitator kind of helping me out with the low end there. And, you know, the settings are pretty much similar um, and it's kind of giving me more. And so now it feels like it has a bit more life. So that is kind of how I started to work with those. And as you can see here, I've started to kind of like you know, these will be the guys who are being sent to the drum verbs and stuff like that as well. Um, my snares, I had two of them. Um, I believe they were playing um, similar patterns. So I panned them slightly as well, um, just to kind of make it feel a bit wider. And as you can see here, I'm cutting out like a lot of the low stuff out of this particular snare. This is snare two, um, which I've named because I think it was named that by the actual producer. Um, and um, a little bit of punch on my transient, actually a lot of punch, but I, I don't really tend to care about settings, which is another good reason uh, to have something like console one or just something that you can move without looking and paying attention to the screen because I don't really want to be led by the screen that much. Um, the second one, as you can see, I've actually um, added a lift here. So um, what I'll do is I will um, just solo these two for a second. So this is the first one that I just talked about. So that's almost got kind of like a side stick feel to it. And this second one here feels a lot more like a clap. So those two, um, you know, I felt like without that little boost, obviously it was a little bit flat in that range around about 1K, just over 1K. Again, you know, some people might go, oh my God, you boosted that by 5 dB. That's crazy. Like, why are you doing that? And it's like, well, I'm doing it because I'm, it sounds good. And, I, and I, that's how I want it to sound. Um one of the things that the SSL 9000K is known for is is for its like slightly more aggressive kind of like punch, but also extended low end. Um, and even though I'm not working with that low end right now, um, I, I still want to kind of just get that kind of like nice aggression, but kind of still clear and tight and punchy by using some of the onboard EQs, as it were. I have a reverse snare here. which obviously felt like it had a bit of a kick in it. So this is kind of like working as a sub rhythm for me. Um, here's a clap, which I bounced, um, sorry, which I balanced obviously, uh, as you can see a fair bit louder um, because it felt like obviously it wasn't popping through. Um, I've got a, I've got a boost on this around about um, seven, uh, 1.7K um, and I've obviously just gone or, just gone up on the punch and everything. So let's um, do that and I'll do, a, I'll do a before and after with this one as well.
so again i know that i'm adding level like that's like quite obvious to anyone but i don't really mind because like i know that all my levels are in check and you know this is this is something that can be accounted for and reaccounted for at various different stages um in the in in the chain um so i'm not really too bothered i just want to kind of get it moving and and kind of get it happening so so far um if we take just the kick and the snares and the clap um, I've got this going on. So this is before. And obviously I'm looking here to kind of like, okay, this is now my foundation for my drums. Um, my hi-hats are doing this. And very simply, I've just put a filter on that and I've just driven it so I can get loads of kind of like top end sizzle. Here with the character, what I've done is I've kind of push, pushed it um, to the right hand side, which would give me um, which would give me much more brightness. Um, and I've obviously panned this instrument off to the left a little bit because I don't want it or to the right, should I say, because I don't want it to be um, I don't want it to be in the way um, of anything else. Um, I've got a Tom here um, with the Tom. Um, I did um, add some low uh, frequency boost around about 150, low mids, five and a half um, dB there. Uh, that's probably that big because I, I, I probably started chasing some of the other boosts that I've done. Again, I wasn't really looking at the actual thing there. I was just kind of going and moving on feeling. Um, and um, interestingly enough, I added... Um, the ozone 8 imager to bring the low end um into the center a little bit more so i could uh, i could still have those toms having impact and feeling big um but not um feeling like they're you know like messing up my low end because i wanted my low end i always like to have my low end as as mono as i can um so where does there you go that's that off um and back on so i'm starting to obviously build um and then i've got this little percussion loop here it's quite obviously been side chained um and again there's not really a lot going on there just like a little bit of drive well <laughs> a lot of drive but like I said, you know, I really do love saturation, creating new harmonics, you know, all of that kind of stuff helps me to make something feel more exciting rather than relying just on EQs. Um, and then I've got these live drums here as well. And these live drums are um, uh, played. Um, and, and they're kind of adding to the rhythm and the overall feeling. Now this, I've obviously gone quite wild with um i cut I, I cut out all everything below around about 100 added loads of punch in um and you know i've boosted some of the low mids to help it to pop out um i boosted some of the high frequencies with a shelf around 21k 22k um and you know i've accounted for a lot of that by bringing the volume down obviously of the of the of the live drums overall uh, but without this they kind of start to fall apart so And then with my imager again, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to obviously um, just keep that low end in check because for some reason it seemed like it was really wild and 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 wide. Um, so my drums are kind of starting to work out um, a little bit more like this. Obviously before, Um, so yeah, I've given myself, you know, 
a, a, a healthy amount of boost there, but that's absolutely fine. Um, most of the time when I do um, add effects and stuff like that, I do a level match, obviously. Um, so if I'm boosting EQs and I'm boosting compressors and you know doing all of that kind of stuff, even with saturation, I do a level match and then I just adjust it to the level where I feel it should be. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly keeping an eye on my levels and I know that things are going to get louder as my chain moves on and stuff like that. So I've got to be careful not to overdo it as well. Um, okay. So all of my drums are rooted to a drum group. Um, and that has just, you know, a, a little flat console on it. Nothing apart from just trying to get the sound of the console, really not trying to drive it at this point or anything like that. And uh, what you'll see next to that is my parallel compression bus of my drums. So um, I work with parallel compression quite a lot. I feel like it can bring um, a lot of good stuff into your mix. Um, and so um, here um, you can kind of start to see, I've not really done anything um, apart from some parallel compression on my drums. So uh, the way that this is going to work is essentially my drums uh, are coming in and you can see here that I'm sending the exact same level signal or well something like that yeah why is that minus six that's weird um, but I'm sending a, to make a copy of my drums essentially yeah so with parallel compression you probably know this already you kind of want, want, want to make a copy and I usually do that by sends I don't tend to find latency in in studio one when I do this so that's pretty good um, and um, Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking something and compressing it really hard, my drums. Um, and when I've done that, I'm ready to essentially um, go ahead and just add in the amount that I want to. Um, so taking my parallel drums away, um, if it allows me to do this. Um, which is not allowing me. So you can see like what I do is I basically usually I listen to this in, in solo and I kind of just get it moving and like hitting really hard. So you can hear here if I just turn this up to kind of like loud. Uh, you'll, and you'll see how much I'm actually compressing the living daylights out of this. Sorry about that. That's probably a bit loud for you guys. Um, <laughs> give me a sec. And this is without the compression. Now, obviously, I'm not, again, I'm not bothered about that boost in level because I know that I'm controlling the level from here and I'm only going to add in as much as I want to. Um, so when it comes to all of the drums, um, I'm going to start to move this level up and then, like, I had it at about minus 35. But I'll, I'll, I'll push it up a little bit more so you can see how it's adding a lot more weight to the sound. And what I love about that is, is not, it's, it doesn't only add like that extra bit of weight. It also adds a little bit of extra atmosphere. So you feel like the drums are a little bit actually bigger because, you know, some of the, from some of the drum stems, I've obviously got the, um, I've obviously got like reverbs on there from the producer and stuff like that as well, which I'm absolutely happy with um, in this case. Um, that all will arrive finally at this drum bus which i call drums all and this is the final place where all of my drums are arriving and i usually will put um some form of tape on these just to kind of glue them together of course i could use a drum or a bus compressor if you want to call it that but just a little bit of tape to glue everything together add some extra harmonics give me some saturation give me some uh light compression as well so i've gone into the tape at a little bit higher um, to just try and hit that a little bit harder. So here's my all of my drums now um, without the tape, and then I'll switch it on, and you'll see this little thing moving and stuff as well. So. So 
so you obviously hopefully get an idea and a sense of how that's kind of glued together but also just feels a bit fatter and it just helps to readdress any slight balance issues that I might not have got right because you know I'm not perfect and whatnot um and um everything is uh, well everything apart from the kicks is being sent to um this uh, drum reverb here just to let you know it's um uh, just it's come into console one um and it's uh, it's valhalla room there you go just very simple setting default setting i just played around with it a little bit and then you got wider so this is one of my favorite plugins um 30 percent um width uh, just to kind of open up that um um uh uh what do you call it um reverb there um so for some reason this is one annoying thing about studio one um so um here uh, without the without the drum reverb i'm just gonna have to bring it down like this And as you can hear, I'm not really adding a lot. Like I'm just, I'm just doing a, a little bit more to just kind of open up that drum sound um, a little bit more. So that kind of would be the end of my and the end of my drums really. And um, I would, I would probably start to move to focus on my bass. So, um, are there any questions about that? Let me check so far, no question, but I'm asking and there may be okay. a bit of a delay, you know. That's fine, that's fine, no worries. So um, they may have read the question before you said it. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, fair enough. Um, uh, boom. Cool. Wait, hold on, Matt. <laughs> Cool. I think. Well, if there's no, there, if there's no, uh, yeah. if there's no questions there, then I think that's fine. Let's move on then. Cool. Um, well, obviously, I'm doing a good job of explaining myself, so that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you are. <laughs> thank you. I, I do uh, have a question, actually. Yes, please, please is, do, please do. Uh, this is this is me being a former um, uh, a user of Studio One. So yeah. I, I notice and I love it. I, I love it. So nothing against. Uh, I love all the tools. But it's interesting that you, I f um, uh, it's you, you use the console and the the plugin that comes with st uh, um, uh, the the console one to recreate mm -hmm. the feel and the touch of the um, the analog console. Mm -hmm. I think Studio One now has also like this semi bus kind of new embedded functionality that's similar to it in a way. Huh? And yeah, it does. Yeah. And why do you pre why do you decide to use the the Softitude one versus the one that's kind of come native in the in Studio One? In in Studio One. So basically, my my um, and it's funny that you're asking me about summing as well, and particularly talk, you've mentioned that. So um um, when I started using Studio One, uh, one um, I. I'd actually already kind of like found myself working with the SoftTube console. Um, and um, the reason that I started using Studio One more and more was because um, it was um, very tightly integrated with console one by SoftTube. Yeah. Um, I then actually had a meeting um, with uh, uh, the head of PreSonus um, who found out that I was using Studio One and he was talking to me about stuff and he was like, oh, did you know that you can do this too? And I actually didn't know <laughs> at that time that you could do it. Um, I, it wasn't a feature that I'd thought about because I didn't need it. Um, but in all honesty, one of the things that has happened recently as well, I'm always looking for um, ways to make my mixes sound better. Obviously, my production sound better. Everyone is, of course. Um, so I've actually got a, I've actually got a hardware summing box now as well. So um, it's 16 channels and um, 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 the first four channels I can have as mono um, and the rest are all stereo groups. Um, and uh, I basically, I'm, I'm finding that, you know, the reason that I'm using console one more and more is because of the workflow. Yeah. And of course, the sound of the 9000K, I love that. 
but um the the the, the workflow is is what's important to me because you know in all honesty i don't want to i don't really want to sit for 12 16 hours mixing a record i would rather get it done in you know half that time or less um so the workflow means a lot to me is yeah. essentially that so, so thank yeah. you thank you for answering okay so we got two questions pleasure. coming in amir um, yeah cool. i think and one question from ryan and i think mm -hmm. you touched on it earlier but um about the the the, the tape plugin what are you looking to add with the tape plugin on the yeah track? absolutely okay so what i'm looking to add um ryan is um is a bit of compression um, so like I said, I could use a compressor like, you know, the SSL bus compressor, whatever one you want to use on your, on your drums, um, or, um, comp um, sorry, using a tape plugin is kind of like a two in one because I get compression and I get saturation as well. And saturation gives me more harmonics. So compression helps me to kind of like just zip my drums together balance wise and uh, saturation gives me more harmonics there so that's the reason that i use that and then i can see tony's got a question here as well right yes yeah, tony's asking so, you yeah you can read yeah so so the the, the cross talk in in particularly in this um um uh, i like to play around with it because sometimes it can add you know a little bit of um a little bit low end or you know a little bit of a mid push or something like that i i'm really just like a fan of if i've got something i'm going to play around with all of the settings and see oh um, you know like typically i know what crosstalk does on a console um um but you know this is i'm just using this on a single bus kind of channel so it's not it wouldn't necessarily be cross talking with anything else um but you know it kind of like i just did that and I went that sounds good <laughs> and I kind of like moved on I've tried not to overthink it as well at that stage so yeah that's cool um right. okay that's cool fun. and I'll uh, okay. let you know if there's other questions I'll queue them for you great thank you um so um the next thing I'm moving towards is my bass. And by now you've started to obviously see what kind of workflow I'm working with um my main concern here with the bass as as it is for everybody, of course, is to make it sound fat, but to make it work with the kick. So you've always got to go back and reference your kick as far as I'm concerned when it comes to uh, working with the um, working with the bass drum, um, sorry, working with the bass um, guitar or whatever bass sound you have, right? So here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solo um, the two kicks that I have, the two main kicks. And um, I'm going to solo this bass here. Let me just double check um, that that's, yeah, that's the one that runs most of the way through. Um, so in some points, there's kind of like, particularly at the beginning of the song, there's like an additional kind of like reverby bass guitar hit, um, which isn't my main track, but um, I obviously am going to focus my most attention on my main track. It's very important to focus your energy on the important things in a mix. Um, as you can see here, I've not really done anything with the console. I've just kind of like added some drive, added some character, and that's it. Uh, very simple setting. Here I'm using uh, the Red DI by um, uh, Kush Audio. Again, I love their plugins um, to basically give me much more bass and a little bit more level. And then surprise, surprise, I've got Decapitator happening after that. So in essence, what happens is I'm firstly going to make sure my level balance is correct between the two, um, my kick drum and then my bass. And then um, I'm going to obviously like, and again, you will notice the level will jump up here with the red DI, um, but um it's for the better, uh, definitely, um, uh, rather than the worse. So here's the Red DI. I'm, I'm going to put it on. Um, so here's my bass and my kick. I'm playing my kick as well. Um, and, um, and all of my drums are now going through that whole chain that I showed you. So for me, that bass sounds like a lot fluffier and a lot more like, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's got, it's got something a little bit more special about it. Now that's obviously come from a, um, a, of a synth of some description might've been a virtual one. I don't know, but, 
but it sounds a lot more fluffier and, I, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of you know taking synth basses and and running them through amps or preamps or you know whatever you want to do to kind of give you that extra edge particularly if it's a virtual um synth um that you're using and then a uh, good old decapitator comes in handy um so i wanted to bump up some of the mids and this is one of my favorite settings the mid driver setting um so obviously you can see i've mixed it into a certain amount um So you can see there, sorry, I've actually got lots of other processing going on on that base, but you can see there what's happened is the base now feels like it moves a lot more, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, I'm going to ignore this base, this base, what, because it doesn't happen for that that long in the track. Um, but my base is going to a group, both of these bases are going to a group there. And um, my group, uh, again, console one, probably not doing a lot, as you can see. Um, but then I use max bass here to give me a little bit more for the speakers, for the laptop speakers and smaller speakers. So off. And again, that's kind of like building it up and making it feel a lot better. So just to take you back, because I hadn't actually got rid of the whole chain. Um, here it is without um, the red DI and the decapitator. And now you can hear my bass is sitting up in the mix and it's like, okay, this is what a bass should feel like, right? Um, I then obviously sent it to parallel compression, which again, nice and easy for me. I've done it on console one. As you can see, I've absolutely crushed the living daylights out of it uh, with the ratio. And um, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a signal there, which is, um, let me just make a note of that. Okay, so there. And again, like you might not be able to hear this if you're on speakers, but like the low end, and I can't, I can't really hear it particularly amazingly on my on my um, um, cans. But and the 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 low end, the sub stuff, really starts to pop out at that point. Um, on my um, uh, combining my bass signals all together here. Um, once again, I've gone with uh, console one, obviously, and. Um, uh, that's doing nothing <laughs> um so it's just there um one thing i've done here is um i've uh, obviously worked on the uh, low um uh, from uh 120 downwards and this is on the mids i've kind of um added a little bit of a bump in the in the middle image right so the middle image not the mids not the mid frequencies the middle image i've added a little bump here um so this is really going to help to pop through in the bass level a little bit more. Um, so what that does is like initially before the hit happens, kind of like he's got, got a little bit of enough attack to kind of just catch your ear a little bit, but then also be controlled in order to get out of the way of the kick. So this is now starts to become about how can we make things interact with the kick rather than, you know, trying to build up the sound itself. Um, this was an interesting one. So uh, when I received this um, uh, and without this on, um, I, I will show you uh, what the, uh, what the uh, width of the bass looks like. Um, so I'll reset this and I'll turn this on. Okay, so that bass is obviously like, it's kind of swimming around. So I want to make it feel a bit more central and a bit more focused. That tightens up the image a lot. And you want to, and you want to really kind of try and veer away from widening bases and particularly in, in the low frequencies of the bass. So everything below 120 got um, basically just I 
I just tightened it up. Just, just absolutely had to do that. And then again, I've got some tape happening here, and um, and that tape is again just adding just a little bit of saturation and a little bit of um, compression on my bass. That's it. And you can hear, interestingly, that kind of brings up some of those slightly more frequencies that have a bit more bite to them so like in in the bass in the, in the bass instrument 600 800 hertz um there's a little bit more bite there a little bit more growl which is what i wanted um so obviously without any of this processing my um my bass would not have sat correctly with my kick uh, the rest was just about levels and um and essentially you know i didn't feel like there was a massive fight all of the time um, between the kick and the bass um, but if I play you now the drums all together and then um, how the bass fits in uh, into the rhythm section as it were um, so I need to just go and grab that and then I can grab that um, So that's obviously feeling a lot better to me. Now, funnily enough, what a lot of people would do is go and mix the instruments, uh, the rest of the instruments, and they'd get the instruments together. I always move over straight to the lead vocal from here. So like I said, um, my big three elements in my mix are going to be my drums, my bass, and my lead vocals. And the lead vocals will tend to actually put together i'll put tend to put together a mini mix um of 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 the lead vocal and how i want that to sit um and um my lead vocal is sitting here at the moment um and the, the when the vocals arrived to me i was fairly happy with them they were tracked very well um and lexi's voice sounded great um as it usually does but I wanted to um, obviously run it through my regular batch of processing that I do. Um, and um, I wanted to give it kind of like the, the, the flavor, the style that it needed. Um, and essentially what I did was I worked um, with my processes. So um, on my lead vocal, I will always go in and take away first, take away, take away, take away, take away, whatever needs to be taken away. So using um, FabFilter Pro Q3, um, I was removing some resonances quite clearly up here um, and just some frequencies that annoyed me. And, um, you know, I've done a high pass on the vocal there um, up till about 92. Um, and um, and then I was DSing her vocal as well. So, you know, like um, DSing is something that you're going to have to do. Um, and it's because you're, you, you just absolutely need to do it. <laughs> um, so, um, just kind of controlling the S range allowed me to, to really make her vocal shine on some of the later processing. Um, then I flipped it after that, I actually put it into console and console allowed me to take away a little bit more lows because, you know, I felt like whatever was happening with the fab filter frequency, I wanted to take away a little bit more of the, of the low end. So, um, I kind of took away some of that um, with a low cut and a low um, shelf. Um, and then I kind of boosted some of the top up to make it feel nice. Um, uh, so 4.8, this is me actually using the BCA equalizer, which is essentially, you know, a Neve, a Neve uh, replica. Um, and I added a bit of compression to her voice as well. Um, this would be like what I would consider as first stage compression. Um, funnily enough, it's all buttons in, um, high attack, um, sorry, fast attack, fast release. Um, and the reason um, that I have all buttons in is because I don't, I just want the meter to just kick slightly. So this is actually how I set up an 1176 when I'm tracking vocals. Um, this is my compressor um, uh, that I will set up on when I'm tracking vocals. So I actually put all buttons in, or 20 to one or all buttons in ratio quick attack quick release and i just want the meter to move a little bit so uh, that was console and then um, a little bit of rvox to i really love rvox because i feel like um 
what they've done is they've just managed to get a really good kind of like compressor that just holds the vocal um and it's a really good vocal compressor so i kind of treated that like you know this is how i would leave a vocal when i've um done a production so again i'm kind of thinking you know how do i prepare my vocal so that it's 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 going to shine when it needs to um and um without the processing let's see if i can make this work hold on one second so i don't need any of that um that's not on great um and <clears throat> again you're going to see there's like a bit of a jump in level and whatnot but it doesn't really matter so in fact <laughs> let's take the instruments away for a second because i just want to concentrate on the vocal like I know she was before I wanna give you everything she gave you and more So obviously I'm gonna begin by adding my um, things where I was taking away mainly So I'm taking away some of the resonances I, Like I know she was before I wanna give you everything she gave you and more so, um, and then I'm going to, obviously, this is going to make quite a difference when I add console one in. I, like I know she was before, I want to give you everything she gave you and more. And then just a bit of Arvox. I, like I know she was before, I want to give you everything she gave you and more. Like I know she was before. And you can see it's even it's barely working at that stage. So when she gets a bit louder, that's when it works. But I'm trying to when I work with compressors, I'm trying to work with them in series with each other. So I'm doing a little bit of compression on each compressor just to show you what that console one compressor was doing. I, like I know she was before. I wanna give you everything she gave you and more. So you can see it's like basically not even it's not even at that point particularly. So I always go um, when I start with it, most things, particularly this vocal, I would have gone to the louder part of the session. And um, she that that meter would have been just hitting a little bit in that instance. Right. So my vocals, usually I will mock them out, but because they were only sent to me as one single lead vocal across the whole song i didn't need to mult them out um and i worked with a lot with automation and stuff um on this channel here but um, my lead vocals at that point um they should be ready for the second round which is basically mixing so um i i then took my lead vocal um and i started to apply um uh, the other effects that i love to use so obviously it's going through console again not really doing anything there but i've kind of taken some of the punch away just because i felt like when she was hitting certain words it was kind of like just popping out a bit too much so i kind of took some of that away of her vocal which was fine um i was going to use this but then i decided not to for whatever reason i just took it away entirely so it's not even part of my chain and then um i, I threw up my favorite vocal compressor of all time ever um, the uh, very fabulous TubeTech CL1B. Uh, this is the version that's done by SoftTube, and I really love that. Um, and this uh, was, um, you know, this was giving me some extra juice uh, from her vocal. So I'll, show, I'll actually show you what that did because, you know, it was my, it is my favorite. So. I, like I know she was before. I wanna give you. She gave you more. Okay, so that's not actually what <laughs> that's not actually moving there. So let me just go a little bit later. So let's see what happens here. I, oh, <laughs> baby, I, I just want to be a fire. All I'll ever be is ashes. Excellent. So that's not even working at that point. Um, so um, then I added MV2. Um, MV2 is kind of like an up, I, I think of it as an upward compressor. So that would be giving oh, baby, I... a little bit more of that low level stuff starts to come up with MV2. 
Um, and then I added some de-essing right at the end of the chain, practically, um, because a, a lot of the time, because I'm using a lot of different compressors, they will be bringing up some of that high-end stuff a little bit more. So at this point, oh, let me find if I can f see if I can find a section with an S in it. Uh, in fact, this section should have. So, so you can see again i've done my de-essing in two stages because de-essing is kind of like compression um well it's basically multi-band compression isn't it and then again at the end of the um at the end of the chain here i've got my tape and that kind of gave me in this case this gave me a little bit more low mid stuff I want to give you everything she... So you can feel that kind of like lower mid range starts to kind of come back a little bit more. Um, and again, you know, kind of like I pushed it into the tape a little bit. I'm trying to get some of that saturation, trying to get some new information um, kind of coming out of, of this vocal. So without this chain, obviously... I, like I know she was before I want to give you she gave you more. So this is kind of like how that is kind of working. Um, and again, these, 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 these slight bits of um, compression that are happening across the whole track, yeah? Now, um, you can see that these are all going to different effects as well. So with my vocal effects, uh, what I've done here, is I've gone to a plate, I've gone to a chorus, um, I've gone to a long reverb, which is set up as um, Valhalla Room, and um, I've gone to a delay, um, which is uh, Echo Boy, um, and um, uh, this uh, side chain is informing, I can't even remember what this is informing, actually. There's obviously a, an effect that I'm trying to, trying to control there because I'm sending to a side chain vocal um, it won't even show me the destination I don't know what I've done there um, okay something's going on with that I'll, pro I'll probably remember what it is and I'll explain it to you um, but obviously working with the dry vocal isn't really that impressive um, so um, I'll show you what it sounds like uh, let me just mute all of my backing vocals they are muted she was before Okay, so you can start to hear how my vocals are kind of starting to come together. Obviously, you can hear the other vocals that are going to the reverbs and stuff as well, um, which I will actually just try and mute now. I, like I know she was before, I want to give you everything she gave you and more. So with the plate, I'm just using um, the Archuria uh, Rev Plate 140, beautiful thing. Um, with the chorus, I'm using um, just this very simple plugin, which is actually free. Uh, Valhalla Room is on there, and um, Echo Boy um, is on as my delay. Now, um, uh, one thing to mention with my effects, I always like to clean them up and tidy them up. Well, not always, as you can see, um, but... I'm doing a little bit of compression on some of them. I've got like some roll offs and some, you know, like stuff happening there. Like I'm not going to leave my effects apart from this one. <laughs> I'm not going to leave them um, in full kind of like glory as it were, because I want to control them. I don't want them to overtake the vocal in any way, shape or form. So once I've actually done that, what I will end up doing is I will end up copying a lot of what I've done over to like these ad libs, for instance. So Lexi, when she starts get go to get going, I, like I know she was before. I wanna give you everything she gave you and more. Oh baby, I ain't foolish. You left your heart in. So I'm starting to work with the ad libs, and then I'm starting to work with the backing vocals. And with the backing vocals, I'm just grouping quickly, grouping and kind of getting stuff together. Uh, a lot of the processing I do for backing vocals is done on the on the bus. And it's and it's basically, you know, these are all of the ooze, right? So these ooze are going to get treated. I don't even know where they are. Hold on one second. I'll have to see if I can find them. Backing vocal ooze somewhere. Aha, uh -huh, there they are. 
So all of these oohs are getting treated. Um, oh no, they're not oohs. They're o o o's actually. So. So you can see like I'm taking some of the top off because I don't want them to outshine the vocals. I'm adding a little bit of compression and then all of my backing vocals are going to go to their own bus. Um, and they're going to start to now fit into the context of my vocal mix, which is basically a mini mix of, whoa, um, of, um, of, of my, of my vocals. Um, so it's kind of like a separate mix to my mix <laughs> in, in a very strange way. Um, but you know, when someone's working particularly kind of like with an R and B flavor, and they and they then they're using loads of backing vocals, you want to be able to kind of like treat it as almost like a separate mix itself. Um, so at that point, um, my drums and my vocals would be like kicking and knocking and all of that, and I'm hopefully sitting in a good place. And then basically it just becomes a case of going through the instruments and just starting to treat stuff, um, yes, individually, but um, in, in kind of like spending my time more on these guitars rather than on just these effects because I don't want to get bogged down in that. That's a background noise, but these guys are like kind of up front, so I need to make them shine a little bit more. And because they were all so similar, what I did was I did a lot of processing actually on the bus. I just added like um well individually actually i would have done a little bit of work a little bit of cutting and compression you can see everyone is slightly different um just to add some differentiation in the mix and then you know as a bus as a group i'm thinking of these and i'm trying to get them into place right um all the while i'm setting up effects for all of these things as well so you know all, all of my electric guitars are going to my guitar reverb uh, which is over here, and I've used the Eventide SP2016 reverb um, with a little bit of processing on console. Nope, I didn't process that at all. Um, so, you know, I kind of, I'm trying to get things like going and feeling good as quickly as I can as I'm moving down my mix from this stage because I've got all of the stuff happening that I need happening. And then it becomes about what's happening over here so my instruments are all sent here my instrument effects are here my vocals are here and my vocal effects are here and i'm starting to look at top down kind of like approach to my mix and which is where really your mix bus processing starts to come in so on my mix bus processor i've got um the ar1 which is um a um, compressor modeled compressor obviously from uh from Kush Audio, um, I've got console one as I always do, but that's only for you know the sound of the console. I've got the Marg EQ, which you know I've been very heavy handed with on the sub. <laughs> I've kind of boosted it up a little bit there, but I've boosted up the air band of 40 and I've kind of taken away some of this um, uh, 160 and added in some 650. Um, this is now really me just trying to make this kind of tip over the edge a little bit. Um, I've got Ozone 8 on there, but I probably would have not bounced it with that on, depending on what's on there. What did I put on there? Oh, yeah, just a bit of multiband compression and imaging just to widen the song out. Um, and then I've got a um, tape plugin on here for my whole mix. Um, I did have FabFilter Pro L2 on there because I always send a limited version to my clients, but obviously. Um, for mastering, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn that off entirely, aren't I? So, um, so that's kind of how that one worked. And essentially, if when you start to get to this stage in the mix, um, I'm probably going to have to bring this level down a little bit. Um, you are looking from the top down, and it becomes a lot, to be honest, about oh, what's happened to my screen? It becomes a lot about what you're doing with your automation. So you're making these movements happen. So over here, I'm riding the level of the sends and also um, the overall level of the lead vocal here. And I've done this all using my fader port fader. 
kind of moving that up and down, moving that up and down. Um, as you can see here, there's kind of like a beatbox vocal in the background, um, which I kind of ducked out in a couple of places. And then I've raised up in a couple of places, particularly the end chorus. You can see down here, these kind of like backing vocals are kind of like moving. Um, and all of this kind of stuff is really what makes the difference, you know. Some of your lighter processing, some of your automation. I've done some automation on the live drums there, kind of pushing into some drum fills, into choruses, then pulling it back to tuck it in um, so it doesn't overtake the chorus or anything like that. And that's really what my whole approach is um, to to mixing, is, is kind of like doing enough little things in order to kind of get you uh, to the end goal, which is building everything up very slowly and very deliberately, of course, um, but getting the getting the result ultimately that is required um, there. So, so yeah, um, who's got any questions? We have a few questions. Uh, cool. Here. So let me let me back up a bit because there were a few questions around the um, the drum processing. Okay, fine. Um, Did you use, I don't know if we, I actually, I forgot if we, did you use the crosstalk in tape to add low end to the drums? Yeah, we did that question okay. and I just said, I said, yeah, sometimes it just gives you some, so that's fine. I forgot that's to cool. uh, check Mark. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. Okay. Did you start the mix? This is a Santiago asking this question. Did you start the mixing mm -hmm. process with bus compressing processing? No, I never started with bus processing. Um, so no, I didn't. Um, I start to put that on. If you want to know when I start to put that on, I actually start to put it on after I've done my vocals. I will put a little bit of bus processing on, then I'll go in and do the rest of my instruments, and then I'll put the rest of my bus processing on, and then I'll go back through the mix. Um, so I'm kind of flipping between the two all the time. Okay. Um, thank you. I, I know you asked a question. I think you touched base a bit on this uh, because you talk about workflow and time you save, but do you find mm -hmm. the process of having hardware controllers like the console one versus clicking with a mouse has a huge difference? Um, yeah, I do. It kind of helps me feel more connected to my mix. So like I said, I spent four to five years working in, in, in a studio, having access to consoles every day. And I could work, obviously I was tracking and mixing, but I could work with, and I felt like I was connected, like an, like, and it was like an instrument. I, I watched their masterclass by, um, ah, oh, Jimi Hendrix's engineer, Eddie Kramer, of course, um, and he plays the the he plays the uh, the board like an instrument, um, and kind of like having that as part of what I do is very important to me. So console one and having fader port, just one fader just allows me to do, you know, those moves I was talking about at the end, particularly allows me to do those very well. Um, Oli has a question about your workflow process. Do mm -hmm. you typically use the Ozone Imager to review every bus or group or mainly just to control the low end of the kick and bass tracks? Uh, interesting and good question, actually. So sometimes I want multiband um, um, widening on, on, let's say, a group of instruments. So even though there's not many in here, um, sometimes on my synths, I would want that. Um, and um, and that's the case where I would I would use something like that to actually widen that stuff out. Um, but mainly, actually, yes, I use it to control the low end because I don't want a low end that's like really wide. It's not going to help anyone. Um, I'm, I'll see, Velma, I will skip your question because I think he went through the mixing vocals, but if you have um, a more specific question, please drop it here. Um, a good question from Tony. Uh, do you lower breaths or lift them? Good question. Um, so you won't have seen this because what I do is in my first round of stuff, um, I do vocal automation first, 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 and then I bounce that, um, which is what you're obviously seeing. Um, and breaths is on a case by case basis. So if I feel like the breath is getting in the way of the song, I will take it. I'll, I'll bring it down. I won't take it away entirely always. Um, but if I don't, I'll just leave it because um, like a singer's got to breathe because they're a human, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a follow up question. What count have you got the delay set to uh, on the echo? On on the echo but on the vo on the lead vocal, yeah, good question. So um, I think I've got an eighth. I'm not really sure. No, I've got a quarter on the left 
and an eight on the right. So I like to work with um with uh, that kind of style a lot of the time. And and you know, there's a lot of songs that I've either produced or mixed um, that would have that um, different delays on both sides. It just adds and makes the vocal feel wider without actually widening it. Um, and it gives you a cool kind of like slap slapping effect as well. So yeah, that that's my settings there. It's actually just based off the back of Stereoizer. <laughs> so um, wherever that setting might be. But as you can see, I have altered it. There you go. You see, it's got the little star next to it. So I didn't just use the preset. <laughs> and is there a bit of a dry signal going as well, or is it just the uh, the delay? No, that's that's completely wet. That yeah, is. it's completely so, wet. Huh? So very low feedback as well. So you're only getting a few slaps off that one. You're not you're not getting a lot. Great. Um, how do, uh, a question from Velma Licious. How do you mm -hmm. go about setting up an effect chance? I he theory philosophy oh, okay so my th uh, my theory or my philosophy is always just do um take away the bad stuff and then build up the good stuff mm. that's my theory so or th that's why particularly with the vocals you know as i started with the vocals um i started with the um with the taking away so i was taking away all the resonances is basically all subtraction on that eq i'm taking away the s's and stuff like that and then uh, with console i can start building a little bit more um, I, you could argue i'm taking away with the compressor as well i'm kind of taking away and holding away the peaks um, uh, but then you can kind of start to build up happily from there, take away what you don't want, enhance what you do want, and um, just try not to screw it up in the process. <laughs> always, always check, always check, always check on, off, on, off all the time, just to make sure you're doing the right thing. Um, don't ruin someone's vocal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another question My from pleasure. Rose or Eloise. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your process for choosing the Echo Boy and or other delay settings on the voice? Um, so the Echo Boy, like for me, is so versatile because like you can get different textures from it. So if you kind of go in in there, you can see you can get different textures. I can add saturation, you know, I can change the groove or the feel, even though I didn't do it here. Um, and you've got all of the single echo, dual echo, ping pong. Like it's a very kind of like um, a very wholesome, e um, sorry, delay. Um, my other favorite, which isn't actually on this mix anywhere, is H delay. I really love H delay because, again, it's simple. It's got character, and um, and you can do some really nice stuff with it. So yeah, that's what I um, that's what I use. Oh yeah, just to mention, ha ha, I found it. So my lead vocal, um, I was I side chained my delay. There you go. So my delay is side chained to the lead vocal. So there's a compressor after the echo boy on the delay, every time the vocal hits, my compressor is ducked down in level. So it's never ever getting in the way of the vocal. I see. I see. <laughs> um, great. Uh, two more questions. One from Marcus. Besides yeah. optimizing the mix by tra track by track, do you also make mm -hmm. temporal changes? Parenthesis separation to direct the listener's interest and help telling the story of the song? Yeah, so I mean, it, I don't think it was on this mix, but um, one one plugin that I use quite often is is Panman. So like Panman can help things to move around in the background, um, and um, and doing stuff with 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 the stereo field is always very interesting to me. Um, so yeah, I try and add some interest where I can. Um, and generally speaking, you know, even something like Micro Shift, which I've put on my um, on my I obviously love sound toys. You can see that, but um, um, Microsoft, which which I've put on my guitars, just kind of helps them to feel a little bit more like dreamy. Um, so yeah, I love I love doing uh, creating interest, uh, particularly in that way. Beautiful. Um, Marcelo has a question. What, how do you mm -hmm. think of your gain structure when going forward, backward, applying changes? He means about digital. There is the there's a very sensitive aspect of gain structure stage and the web plugging sound. Yeah, so I mean, like obviously with gain staging, like my my main concern with digital is not to hit any plugins or come out of plugins in uh, in the red. So um, my, as you can see, I start very con conservatively with my levels. Um, and then um, making sure, you know, obviously co going into any plugging or coming out of any plugin, I'm not clipping. If I'm clipping, that's going to make my mix sound bad on 
on the, on the, you know on the whole um even though you can see this big clip there <laughs> um but on the whole um i'm always the thing is and what one one piece of advice i would say is that as you kind of uh, go along and you, and you mix more and more and more you start to understand what it is that you do and how much that adds so you can start to go well i'm going to need a little bit more on this mix so my initial gain stage is going to be you know i'm going to peak on my bus at minus 18 because i know by the time i'm up and getting around minus six i'll be finished my mix but it takes it takes time but the main thing for me is do not clip a cl plug-in going in or out unless you're looking for a special effect, which is basically digital distortion, which, you know, I don't really like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question from Velma. She's asking you if you have any good books or videos you would recommend for a beginner mix engineer. So one of the... <laughs> One of the best videos that I will will recommend to you is on YouTube, and it's um, I think it's called David Gibson, uh, the Visual Guide to Mixing, or something like that. Um, it's a bit trippy, and it was made in the 80s, so it's hilarious. Uh, but the concepts are actually something that I've carried on with me like throughout my life. I, I watched it when I was at university, um, and no, I wasn't on drugs at the time. Um, but it's a very trippy video. <laughs> it's two hours long and it's based on the back of a book um, uh, that was done by him um, um, on the same concepts. And um, when you think about music visually, uh, particularly uh, with regards to where something is in the sound field and um, how far or close something is to you, which you can adjust by obviously volume, reverbs, delays, um, lack of high frequencies, all of that kind of stuff. It really allows you to, do, to kind of take a step into your mix and to really push to get the depth that you want from that mix as well. So that one, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. It's like a two hour video. Um, it's a great one. Um, I will share it here. Um, and I think m there's a book by Mike Senior called um, um, Mixing Secrets of the Home Studio or something like that. That's a really good book. A bit more technical, um, but a really, really good book to work um, with as well. Uh, apparently, Velma met him in San Francisco. Wow, Velma, pretty cool. Who, David Gibson or, um, or um, Mike Senior? Where did, where did you meet Velma? <laughs> All right, she's gonna do, she's gonna answer. All right, she's gonna let what us know. Answer, we, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this up uh, with um, a question, a, right? A question, uh, and we're gonna give away uh, just so everybody knows what we're gonna give away. We're gonna go to uh, so now it's this, right? Yeah, this the, the this this is it, uh, but the version that's gonna work for your headphones and for your monitors. Exactly. It comes with. Uh, a mic uh, to listen to your room. So yep. this is a worth like $300. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, so when we're ready in the Q&A, the first person who gives the, pr the correct answer. So a tip for everybody, uh, because I know this was a challenge last... Uh, last uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I am only on the left. Um, this was the trick, so you could hear the, uh, the track in stereo. I'm sorry, Rose. Um, <laughs> So everybody should click on the uh, live. Make sure that you uh, are at the end of the, the timeline on the live stream. So you all have, are listening at the same time. And once you've done this, we're going to give you five seconds to do that. Um, I'm just going to ask a question. And the first person who says the right answer will get the, the prize. And uh, you will get in touch with Anna. So let's okay. do it. What's the question? So the question for today is, um, I mentioned what my favorite vocal compressor of all time is. Can you please answer with that compressor? Your favorite vocal compressor. Yep. All right, drum roll. <laughs> oh, I, see I see people typing. Yeah. All right, TubeTech CL1B. That's the one. Brad, you are the winner. Congratulations, <laughs> right, Brad. I think it's not a, Brad. You, um, I, I believe you work. You you won a bunch of stuff uh, before, so <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Brad is fast with the fingers. Brad got this nailed nailed down. Okay, so Brad, get in touch with uh, 
uh, uh, is like, I have it, give it to Ricardo. Oh, okay. That's very kind. That's this very, is kind. very kind. Uh, Ricardo yeah. is saying, uh, uh, all right. Uh, well, so Brad, we'll figure out something else then, man. Uh, all good. good. So Ricardo is the one who is. Uh, so Ricardo is the winner. Congratulations, Ricardo. <laughs> well, um, listen, I'm going to put both of us here. Uh, yeah. I mean, this was absolutely amazing to have you. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from London. What, what time is it now for you? It's now eight o'clock, so I'm going to go and get some pizza. <laughs> so get some pizza, enjoy it. It was really an honor to have you. I think uh, uh, this, was, uh, this was really highlight of the day. That's uh, my pleasure. Make sure you go and check out the full track so you can hear the mix yes, as well. <laughs> yes, and is the track has been available now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, uh, this was released a good few weeks ago and on right. Spotify. So right. it's, um, yeah, the artist's name is Lexi. And um, yeah. yeah, enjoy we'll it. We will share on, uh, we have a Slack channel where we share the, the music. Perfect. So we'll definitely share it. Also make Perfect. sure, uh, Amir, if we get, wanted to stay in touch with you, the best way is what, uh, Instagram? Um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you prefer. So my um, my handle on all of those is Amir Music. So it's A A M I R M U S I C. That's it. Boom! Here, this is how you follow Amir Perfect. everywhere on Twitter. Okay. Twitter, Instagram. Um, that's that's my handle everywhere. Okay, so you have it. Make sure you follow him. Okay. <laughs> all right we're gonna uh for everybody what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the live stream and start a new one fresh with uh, frank and jack so give us uh, a minute and amir i wish you uh, a good evening and enjoy that pizza well deserved thank you guys thank, thank you, you everyone who came